question is, what is the 2300-day prophecy? What is its significance? Well, as I said in my introductory remarks, the 2300-day prophecy is the prophecy that we find in the book of Daniel. Now, the book of Daniel is one that was very, very important to the Reformation. And it's very interesting that Martin Luther, he decided that when he started to translate the Old Testament, that the very first book that he would translate because the people needed it was the book of Daniel. He didn't start with the book of Genesis, as would be normal. He started with the book of Daniel because the people needed it. And the book of Daniel paid, played a pivotal role in the Reformation. The study of Daniel chapter 7, well, all of the chapters in Daniel, but particularly Daniel chapter 7, uh, which gives such a detailed description of the little horn power that would arise out of the fourth kingdom, which is the divided Roman Empire, that this power was indeed the papal system. And this led to that rift in Christianity, which today is termed the Protestant Reformation. And it's a very apt name because they protested against the power that had taken to itself prerogatives that belonged to Christ alone. Now, those prophecies, of course, continue to the end of time. And they formed the key to the book of Revelation. Now, people said that the book of Revelation is a closed book. I'm going around about in this now, but we're getting there. The book of Revelation is a closed book. But the reformers proved that it was not a closed book. They didn't understand it all. But that which was relevant for their time, they understood. So, for example, Revelation chapter 13, the first beast of Revelation, all the reformers were very clear upon this point that the criteria in that book matched those of the little horn. And they proceeded up to the point where they could. But there are prophecies in the book of Daniel which they could not comprehend because the Bible actually says in the book of Daniel regarding these prophecies that they are sealed until the end times. And the prophecy that is sealed is the 2,300-day prophecy. In other words, it couldn't be fully understood until you get to the end times. Not the end of time the end times. And that period, again, is defined in Daniel chapter 12 as the end of the 1,260-day period, in other words, the period of papal supremacy. When that period came to an end, then these prophecies would start to be unraveled. So after that magical date, 1798, when that period of papal dominance came to an end, there was this excitement, this new excitement about the book of Daniel, which grew worldwide. And out of that movement, eventually, we get the Millerite movement, which started to make very specific claims as to what the 2,300-day prophecy was all about. And they concluded that it ended with the coming of Christ. But in, as I said before, their conclusion was incorrect. It actually pertained to the cleansing of the sanctuary. And for that, you needed to understand other portions of the Bible, the Levitical system, the sanctuary message. And this had to be understood before those prophecies could be expounded. And this is where this remnant church comes in. God will not give a revelation and only allow us to understand a portion of it. Throughout history, 
the portions of prophecies that pertain to the future were not understood by the prophets of the time. They had a, a look into the future, but didn't understand what it was all about. Those prophecies were understood when they were fulfilled. And so you have a portion in the Bible which was not understood until this close of, or, or this time period, which is called the end times. Now, in the book of Revelation, you don't only have chapter 13, you have chapters 14 right up till the end of the book of Revelation. And in chapter 14, there is a list of a very specific message that must be given to the world. It's called the three angels' messages. And that would only be available after the unsealing of a specific prophecy. We read that in Revelation chapter 10, where a little book is closed or sealed in the hand and has to be unsealed. And that was the 2,300-day prophecy. And when that had been unsealed, and when the sanctuary message started to become clearer, that is when the end-time message, the three angels' messages, could be presented to the world. Now, you have to ask yourself a question. If there is a very specific message that is to be given to the world with a loud voice, then is there a church in the world today that actually gives that message? And you can search high and low, my brother and my sisters. You can search the world from the east to the west, from the north to the south. You will find only one organization that arises at the right time as the consequence of the unsealing of a prophecy in the book of Daniel and that preaches the three angels' messages. And that is the Seventh-day Adventist church. Whether we like it or not, that is one of the signs that this church has a very specific prophetic message. So without the 2,300-day prophecy, we wouldn't have a time frame when these messages would be going into the world. And since exactly according to that prophetic timetable, these messages went into the world, we must be able to understand who the remnant is that is preaching that message. By the way, that's why I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Because if you start understanding the three angels' messages, then you must also know that it is coupled to an organization that is preaching that message. So the first message says what? It says there must be an everlasting gospel. And you must worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And you must give glory to him. I was an evolutionist. And where do you find that clause? The heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. You find it in the heart of the fourth commandment, right? Yeah. And God is calling his people back to obedience. So all of these issues together became very important. And then, of course, Babylon is fallen. Who's Babylon? You have to understand the Bible and the Babylonian system and the system of worship to understand anti-typical Babylon when the same criteria of a works-orientated religion will be uh, manifested in the world. And against that, you have the Protestant preaching of righteousness by faith and obedience to God, not as a means of salvation, but as a consequence. And then the whole plan of salvation starts making sense. So the 2,300-day prophecy is pivotal to understand end-time events. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, there is one point you made I want to reiterate, and that is that the, the book Revelation 
The very name is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which means it's a revealing of God's character. So, so that the book can be understood, all we need to do is to pray to the same Holy Spirit, which actuated LNG White and the, the prophets, and we will understand God's word.